Director, welcome back. Canada's Foreign Affairs Minister Melanie Jolie is up. She's commenting on an NDP motion which is calling for Palestinian statehood and will be voted on today. Non-binding motion. Let's listen in here for a moment. Frequent and intense from extremist settlers. These violent acts alone cost the lives of more than 300 Palestinians and have forced the displacement of over 1,000 others since October 7th. We spoke with a family that was forced to leave their house by Israeli settlers and has been banned access to their family farm which usually is necessary to their survival. Mr. Speaker, we are clearly opposed to this violence, and we will sanction those who are responsible for it. Palestinians continue to struggle for their self-determination and the creation of a Palestinian state, a state where they could feel safe, a state where they could live in security, a state where their human rights would be respected, a state where they could live with dignity, have a family, and build a better future for their kids. Palestinians struggle for a home of their own. Mr. Speaker, this crisis has exposed cracks and deepened the wounds of society on both sides. It is fueled by dehumanization. And when we don't see the humanity of others, injustice falls onto the shoulders of innocence. This pain has extended throughout the region and here at home. In Canada, we mourn the loss of eight Canadians killed on October 7th. Countless Canadian families mourn the loss of loved ones in both Israel, Gaza, and the West Bank. In Canada and around the world, we have witnessed a sharp rise of anti-Semitism and also a sharp rise of Islamophobia. <laughs> Muslim and Jewish communities are targets of physical and verbal attacks. They have been harassed on streets and online, barred from places of worship, and made to feel unsafe in their schools. This is not the promise of our country, Mr. Speaker. Our government will continue to strongly denounce and condemn all forms of discrimination and racism, which have no place in Canada. Beyond the rise of anti-Semitism and Islamophobia, this conflict has polarized our society and is te testing the strength of our social cohesion. We're entangled in a web of devastation and face pressure to pick sides, forced to believe that if we speak up for one, of course, surely we're against the other. For us, it is not that simple. Monsieur le Président, Mr. Compte Speaker, tenu de l'état de la situation, je doute qu'il n'y ait aucun vainqueur. Il n'y aura que des victimes et des survivants qui pleureront à jamais leur perte. Avec With the current level of, levels of destruction that we have witnessed, it will take years to rebuild everything. Rebuilding Gaza will require our assistance and Canada will be there. We will be there to rebuild healthcare systems in Gaza particularly hospitals for children. It will take decades and even generations to uncover and deal with the consequences of the traumatism, trauma rather, uh, lived by Israelis and Palestinians. And this is why in this tragedy, I will always take the side of human dignity and the protection of civilians, both Israeli and Palestinian, because we owe it to Palestinians and Israelis who have been abandoned for decades uh, because no lasting solution was found to this conflict. And aside from this failure, terrorists and extremist voices are being heard in all, on our platforms, and they are undermining the future of Israelis and Palestinians. And this is not even to mention the greater impact on the Middle East. In Canada, our position is rooted in three principles. First, the right for Israel to exist, and by extension, to defend itself in accordance with humanitarian law. Second, the protection of civilians. And third, the right to self-determination of the Palestinian people. We fully recognize these principles are in tension with each other right now, but we remain committed to all of them. The violence must end, 
An immediate humanitarian ceasefire is urgently needed. And this ceasefire cannot be one-sided. Of course, Hamas needs to lay down its weapons, and all hostages must be released. The need for humanitarian assistance in Gaza has never been greater. Rapid, safe, and unimpeded humanitarian relief must be <clears throat> provided to civilians now. And this is why Canada will participate in every single way to help. Because of the urgency of the situation, we have resumed funding to UNRWA while supporting efforts to reform the organization. We will contribute to the humanitarian sea corridor. We will support airdrops. We recognize that this will not replace the urgent need for more access by land, and we'll continue to press for it. We are gravely concerned by Israel's plan for a ground military offensive into Rafah. About 1.5 million Palestinians are taking refuge in the area, including many of our citizens and their families. Mr. Speaker, they have nowhere else to go. We've made it clear to the Israeli government that we urge them not to go down this path. En ce qui concerne la Cour internationale de justice, uh, nous reconnaissons of justice. pleinement que les fully recognize that the court's provisional measures are binding for both parties. The ICJ was clear. Israel must provide basic services, essential humana humanitarian assistance, and protect civilians. Mr. Speaker, in terms of export of controlled merchandise to Israel, I'd like to reiterate that Canada already has a very strict export permit system, and every uh, request is examined case by case. Since October 7th, we did not approve any permits for non-lethal merchandise products, and given the rapid uh, change in the system on the ground, uh, we did not approve, we have not approved any permits since January 8th. The only way to reach peace and lasting security for Israeli and Palestinians is a negotiated political solution. In conclusion, we need lasting peace and uh, safety for Israelis and Palestinians, and we need a negotiated solution. And I think that Canada has a role to play. Our diplomatic legacy is one of Lester B. Pearson, Pierre Elliott Trudeau, Jean Chrétien, Brian Mulroody. It's peacekeeping and creating bridges to encourage negotiations. Today, we have the responsibility to build on this tradition. Canada will remain committed to a two-state solution, including the creation of a Palestinian state where Palestinians and Israelis live side by side in peace, security, and dignity. The long-term security of Israel, the normalization of diplomatic relations in the Arab world, and the creation of a Palestinian state cannot be considered separately or in opposition to one another. They are intertwined, and we must recognize this and act on it. And we are committed to being pragmatic and doing our part. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, Mr. Speaker.